So my bandmate the other day asked me, hey, can we make a song in 3-6? And I was like, no, no, you can't. You can't do that. It's, there's no such thing as a sixth note. The denominator has to be a power of two. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc. But then I thought, well, why not? What, like, what, what, what would you do if you wanted to make something with with six as the denominator, or some some number that's not a power of two? So that's what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna we're gonna do that kind of thing. Um, so I want to actually look at five seven um, because it, it's like prime numbers. It's gonna be more interesting. Uh, so let's look at five seven. So um, if we want to notate this, if we want to write out a measure of 5-7, it's going to be really challenging because a seventh note doesn't exist, okay? And that's what's supposed to get one beat, is a seventh note. So how do we make a seventh note? And the way we're going to do that is using tuplets. Uh, so the most famous tuplet is a triplet. So the way that we're going to do this is using ratio tuplets, okay? So ratio tuplets look like this. This is a standard triplet. This is a normal triplet. And so what it's saying is that three tuplet eighth notes, um, which are the eighth notes in the tuplet, three of those uh, takes up the same amount of time as two normal eighth notes. And that's with eighth notes. But what we can do to make it in 5-7, so there's, there's your reference up there. So to make it in 5-7, all we have to do is say we want um, eight eighth notes equals a whole note. So we say we make a tuplet where we have seven notes that uh, together will be in the same time as a whole note, meaning that they are seventh notes. And that's what we have here. And then we split the, the measure line splits up the tuplet so that you end up with five of those seventh notes in a measure. And there you go. There's five seven. That's how you write five seven. And these are a couple other examples. You can see here how 6-8, how you would do that in 6-8, and how you end up with the right thing, end up with 6 eighth notes in a 6-8 measure. So that's cool, 5-7, um, writing in 5-7, um, that's cool. But there's a problem. If I were to write a song in 5-7, it would sound exactly the same as a 5-4 song or a 5-8 song, okay? Um, more or less, that bottom number is actually redundant. Uh, there's nothing that you can do with that bottom number that you couldn't do without it. And um, sometimes it's useful. It's definitely sometimes useful to convey something to a reader who's reading music. Uh, but it, it, at a fundamental level, it is pretty redundant. And because that's how it is, we actually aren't going to end up with anything that sounds unique and sounds different uh, if we do 5-7 because it'll just sound like it's in 5, which is uncommon, but you know it's been done before a lot. So what we can do instead is convert 5-7 or something into something 4. Okay, so basically we want to figure out how many quarter notes are in a measure of whatever time signature. And then that number over four is our new time signature, and that will give us new interesting stuff. Namely, um, 1415 is what I decided to go with because it ended up giving a very, very weird number that sounds really off. Um, and I, that was kind of the goal, is to get it to sound as weird as possible. So, uh, 1415, you end up with 3.73333, etc., uh, over four. Okay, which I approximated to 3.75. It's, you know, not that big of a difference. So, there you go. Um, 3.754 is the time signature of this song that I have made. And uh, I'm going to show you a time lapse of that. And you'll hear, you'll hear it over the time lapse right now. 